Hey, welcome back. It's Eric, once in a while known as the Big E Arnold, here in the sports barn, and it's Friday, October 8th, oh, late afternoon. Once again, the day's getting away from me. I had plenty of time. I was done with the handicapping this morning. I thought we'll get all this done actually on time for once. Didn't happen. So we're rushing around here trying to get this video up to you. Uh, in a timely fashion. So let's get right to it. Unfortunately, I've got a stem winder of a politics barn video in my head, and that's kind of sucking on my energy. I want to talk about that, uh, but that's not what you're here for. So if I, hopefully I'll have time and I can get that out. But let's do college football. That's what we're here for. I think we got, what, maybe 12 picks? 12 picks, you know, we're hitting it so far, you know, it's early, but so far we're hitting around 56%. So, yeah, I, I'm, ten, I'm tentatively encouraged. In other words, for those of you that are new, I use a historical model to help me make my picks. You know, I have a big-ass database that has lots of old scores and helps me tell what's happened in the past when certain scenarios happen. This is how this has happened in the past. So that helps guide me. Well, I got to test out the thing a little bit and then the world ended. So, you know, when I was running the model during the end of the world season of last year, I lost all over the place. And it was just frustrating as hell. It's like, this doesn't work. And I kept thinking to myself, well, of course it doesn't work. You're using a historical model in a time that's never happened before. Shit that's never happened before. Seasons that there's no non-conference schedule. The season starts in mid-October. Some teams didn't even have a season. So of course it didn't work. So I'm tentatively encouraged that, you know, we won with the baseball, which was a relatively normal baseball season. So we, and the model worked. We did win the, during the season in baseball. So now we're running sort of the same model, except for college football. So we're tentatively encouraged that it's working. So let's see what happens. All right, here are, the, here, here are the games that I didn't pick. These are the ones that are on TV. I actually spent a few extra minutes just because last week all the leaners had lost, and I thought, well, everybody's going to be mad because the only games they give a shit about are the ones on TV. And if the games don't fit into my little model, you know, I don't pick them. I don't have a edge. I don't bet those games. But... Uh, I know you want to bet the games that are on TV naturally because they're the ones you can see and enjoy and have action on. So here's, you know, like I said, I spent just a few minutes just trying to get the right side of these for you. I had one good week of this and then one bad week of this. So week three of the leaners, if you will. Well, we get the Red River shootout early. Another 11 a.m. local time game. Um... I guess they do that every year down there. Maybe that works for them, you know. You do the Red River shootout in the morning, and then you get all night to hit the town in Dallas and, you know, go do whatever you're going to do down there. So, I, I, Oklahoma generally wins this game. Uh, the number's only three and a half. That's pretty close. Um, generally speaking, if you can pick the winner of a game, the winner of the game... 60-70% of the time also covers it. You know, that's a pretty th thin window to hit there, that three and a half. Especially in college football, where you're scoring, you know, dozens if not hundreds of points, it seems like. So, we think Oklahoma, historically, would win this game. Therefore, we're just going to take the Sooners. Um, Texas is never back. They're never back. You know, this is a Texas's back game. You know, they, they dramatically win this game and then you know, go marching off to the SEC. Well, or, well, I guess they're both marching off to the SEC, so <laughs> they're taking Oklahoma with them. But we'll take Oklahoma. Uh, the, the, I guess the Pretender Bowl. I mean, both these teams had huge games last week against the elite of the SEC and got their heads handed to them. 
I'm going to say this, the, the, the beating that happened last weekend hurt Arkansas more than it hurt Old Miss. I, I think that Arkansas thought they could compete with Georgia, and that game just wasn't even close. Just was not close. Ole Miss sort of, you know, they're used to getting their asses handed to them by Alabama. It pretty much happens every year. So I don't know, you know, that it, Mississippi has a baseline to react to. It's like, okay, well, that is just another ass kicking by Alabama. Next. Whereas Arkansas, you know, I actually think that team maybe flew too high and just, you know, it, it, so I think that Arkansas is going to suffer a little bit here, uh, be down a little bit, and uh, this looks like a good spot for Ole Miss. Uh, Rutgers, Michigan State. <laughs> Michigan State's ranked 11th. Can you believe that? I, I you know, uh, if you, I don't think there's a man in America, not even Mel Tucker, that thought that the Michigan State would be ranked 11th at this point in the season. I why go away with from them? I just stick with Michigan State. I mean, Rutgers just get, has just been beat up by Michigan and then Ohio State. How you know that's a team that needs a week off, but they're not going to get it. And here comes Michigan State, so we'll just stick with uh, Michigan State. Uh, Ohio State, Maryland. Uh, I don't know. I you know I think the model told me take Ohio State here, and I you know. I, I I need to like try to start tracking this because I think I might be throwing winners out the door. In other words, the model told me to take Georgia last week. It told me to take Alabama, and I tossed them both in the trash can just based on my own judgment. And guess what? The model was right. Uh, here's another one. The model's saying take Ohio State, and I'm tossing it in the trash can. It, I just kind of... You know, I probably ought to just stick with what the model says and just accept the fact that I know nothing. Uh, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a little hesitant here with Ohio State. I'm just not totally sold on this team. But, you know, this is a historically a spot where we'll just score 50, 60 some points on Maryland and, uh, you know, they'll get 20 or 30 and it won't be enough to cover the number. So, um, I don't, you know, I'll probably look at Ohio State here. Uh, the big game. I mean, the big game. Uh, Penn State, Iowa. Woo! I, who who would have thought this would have been a big game at the beginning of the year? But here you got both teams undefeated. Uh, both teams with big out of conference wins. Ohio or uh, Penn State beating Auburn, and then uh, Iowa beating Iowa State. Um. You know what? I, I, I'm going to come down with Penn State here. I think Penn State will lose in horrifying, dramatic fashion, just like they always do at some point. And, and you know, they'll all be out there. I'm looking right over there. There's my pitchfork. Here, I'll, you know, we'll go get it. Why not? See, a lot, you know, I live in Pennsylvania, so... A lot of Penn State alums, they all have pitchforks, just like this one. And they're all going to be out for James Franklin when he loses some huge game that would put him into the elite status that he so desperately craves. Um, but it won't be Saturday. I don't think that Iowa is going to be the team that takes down Penn State's dream season this time around. Penn State's beaten Iowa the last few times out. You know, the last few times they've played Iowa, they've beaten them. So I think they're just a little better than Iowa, and they're going to – it'll be a grinder. I mean, it'll be a brutal grinder, but I think Penn State will get the W. So we'll take Penn State. Uh, Michigan, Nebraska. Uh, how can you take Nebraska? How can you take Nebraska? I mean, that's just a team that – has not been relevant for years, years. I'm going to say a decade, maybe more. It just and anytime they get close, they get clobbered. And and Michigan's been no great shakes over the last few years. But damn, I mean, you know, Michigan's much more relevant in the college football landscape than Nebraska is. And I think the number's way too short here. And I think Michigan's going to get this game and cover the number. 
Uh, and then Virginia Tech, Notre Dame. How can you go against Sandman at night? You got to take Virginia Tech there. So that's what the leaners are. I don't have any real hard and fast idea who's going to win those games. So there you have that. All right. Here's a. Uh, now, I love this game, and I don't know if I'll be able to get this up to you before kickoff tonight or not, but Temple at Cincinnati. Excuse me. The uh, model has nothing to say about this. This is all me. This is all me just saying I think this is going to happen. Um, Temple, I watched a lot of that game last week because that was one of my games that Temple would play well against Memphis. They did. They won outright as an 11-point underdog. Temple has a quarterback named Dwan Mathis. Uh, he's, I think, 21. He was uh, recruited out of Michigan by Ohio State. He couldn't make it at Ohio State. He went to Georgia. You heard of them? <laughs> but he couldn't make He actually played a little bit down the air last year with Georgia. Then he went into the magical portal. And now he's at Temple. So here's a guy that has the talent to be recruited by two of the big swinging dicks in college football. And, you know, there's only one quarterback position. And, you know, he, he just could not beat out some of these guys at these other huge schools. Is he bad? No, but he's probably better than your average American quarterback, your American conference quarterback. So... Um, he had a good game against Memphis. He got hurt in the Rutgers game and missed a, some time. And that was when Temple piled up their, you know, poor resume. But since he's, he's, he looks like a really good quarterback. Uh, Temple generally plays Cincinnati pretty close. I mean, in other words, you're not seeing six touchdown blowouts. Now, I get it. Well, Cincinnati's never been the number whatever team in the country. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But I just kind of think Cincinnati now is going to start this long stretch where there's nothing to be excited about. You know, in other words, all right, we won all our exciting games, and now all we have, now all we are, are four touchdown favorites the rest of the season, and all these you know teams that aren't as good as we are coming for out for blood, trying to take on the champ. And how do we get up for that? How do we get up for temple? Yeah. How do we, and we just played at South bend and beat them. How do I get up for temple? You know, so I just don't know how the hell Cincinnati gets up for this game. 30 points. Are you kidding me? 30 points. I think Temple's going to give these guys game. Uh, and even if they don't give him a game, it might be enough of a grinder where pe a, a Temple Dwan Mathis throws a, you know, a 30-yard miracle pass at the end and backdoor covers uh, uh, for Temple. Uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah, I got a decent quarterback and I'm getting 30 points. Yeah, give it to me. Give me Temple. Uh, all right, Saturday. Well, West Virginia Baylor, uh, we like West Virginia. Um, you know, a lot of this... Uh, 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 stuff we use, uh, who can control the line of scrimmage? Can you run? Can you stop the run? That's something the model looks at. That's something the model believes in. Uh, I think these are sound football principles. Can you stop the run? Can you run the ball? Um, we were in the winner's circle, unbeknownst to you, last night with Coastal Carolina. Same deal. You know, Arkansas State can't stop the run, fade them, W. You know, that's the, uh, so I'm kind of thinking that's the thing here. That's the principle here with West Virginia. Uh, you know, they had a clunker last week at home against Texas Tech. Uh, but then the last time they went south, they played really well against Oklahoma. So uh, we're going to go ahead there with West Virginia. Uh, let's see. For the life of me, I can't. I, I, I got two things going here. Bear with me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. I got a team written down there and I crossed them off and I couldn't, I couldn't remember if I, I did it. Well, never mind. Illinois catching 11 at home against Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin, I mean, how, how, how does that team get up? You know, they, they've just had their entire season just 
crumpled up and thrown in a trash can in the last month. You know, lost Penn State, lost Notre Dame, lost Michigan, and, and physical losses, too. These are all wear you down, beat you up kind of losses. And that's the kind of team uh, Illinois is. Uh, Illinois, now they've got their starting quarterback back, veteran O-line, catching 11. I think the last time uh, they played that Illinois, and I'm going by memory, totally by memory on this one, but I think the last time these two teams played at Illinois, Wisconsin was in the top five, and Illinois won as like a three-touchdown dog. So... Uh, I think a good spot again for Illinois. With catching 11 at home, we'll take Illinois. Uh, Virginia, we'll take the two and a half there against Louisville. I think Virginia is a tough team, a strong team, an underrated team. Uh, another good, good, very, very good uh, ACC team, Wake Forest. Uh, they're only six point under or favorites at uh, Syracuse. I, I really like Wake Forest's coach. You know, he's a really good coach, that guy, Dave Clawson. Uh, so we'll go ahead there with Wake Forest. Uh, I know I crossed that one off. Yeah, okay, here we go. This one, I have no idea what this is doing on here other than if, if, if UConn's favored over anybody, then somebody must know something. That's all I can think of. So, you know, we'll take Connecticut there as a short favorite at UMass. Uh, Florida Atlantic, uh, they're getting four at UAB. We'll take that. Uh, here we go, Georgia. Um, I hope we're not now out of phase with uh, uh, Georgia and Alabama and that we should have had these guys last weekend. The model did have them last weekend, and I foolishly threw it away. Um, so now, you know, the model's coming right back. Model likes momentum. You know, I think that the, there's a strong historical trend in college football towards momentum uh, that perhaps doesn't carry over to, say, pro football. You know, in other words, you blow the shit out of somebody in college football, uh, the pro lesson we would learn from that is, well, then the team might take a game off the next week. Uh, college football, if you're blowing people out, sometimes you just keep blowing them out, you know, because whatever. Um so Georgia, you know, they, they, well, they looked unstoppable, you know, if they play anything like they did last Saturday, they should beat Auburn by three touchdowns. Uh, so, you know, the model says, go ahead there with Georgia. Uh, how can we get away from San Antonio? This team's undefeated and, and they're getting points. I, I it's like, nobody, the, nobody believes here in old San Antonio you know, when did Western Kentucky, where's their pedigree all of a sudden? Why are they favored over undefeated San Antonio? Uh, San Antonio, it looks like a tough team, like I said, that can control the line of scrimmage. And, and I think that's where we you got to love that, getting points on the road and you can control the line of scrimmage. Uh, give me some San Antonio. Uh, Kentucky, LSU. More of the same, you know, uh, Kentucky's going to run the ball. They're going to control the line. They're at home. It, I've never thought a hell of a lot of the uh, other stoops as a coach, but I don't know. Maybe the guy's getting better because the last few years in Kentucky have been relevant. You know, the team's been pretty good. And, and I, I'm, I'm at a loss as to why they're not ranked. They're undefeated. An SEC team that's undefeated that just beat Florida and Maybe they are ranked. Maybe I missed that somewhere. But anyway, Kentucky, we'll take a shot there, you know, as a short favorite at home over LSU. Uh, the Barstool guys have convinced me LSU sucks. So we'll go ahead then with uh, Kentucky. Uh, Alabama, once again, uh, you know, uh, I think A&M is no good. Uh, you know, I, I had such a buzz around that team. I frankly don't know that much about them. But I guess they're playing a backup quarterback, maybe, or I honestly don't know that much about them. I, I just, so the model likes Alabama. This is a momentum play. So we'll just go ahead here with Alabama. And then lastly, we got San Diego State. Uh, New Mexico, we're, we're, we're hoping they're bad. You know, I know that team was in complete disarray 
with Bob Davey as the coach. And that was, but I don't know how long ago that was. Uh, I, I just didn't have time to look it up. Hopefully they're still in disarray. I mean, Davey's gone. I'm reasonably sure of that. And hopefully the new guy just hasn't had time to clean the mess up yet. So uh, San Diego State looks like they have a really strong team. That's another ground game team. Uh, and I'm, we're hoping they just ground it out and uh, uh, beat these, some of these teams in the submission. You know, we're getting in, you know, we're no longer in the early, early stages of the season. So now, you know, some of the season starts to wear on some of these teams. They start to, uh, the depth or lack thereof is starting to come into play. And sometimes these ground teams are able to pop some easy, big, long runs in the fourth quarter, uh, which is what you're looking for. So there you have that. That's what we got there for you. So we'll try for an NFL video. I keep saying that. I'm not trying very hard, apparently, because you haven't gotten one in the last few weeks. But I think we're starting to catch our vibe, though, a little bit in the NFL. I've been, you know, I watch the games, and I am sort of paying attention to the numbers. And, you know, my general feels are pretty close so far in the weeks I haven't made videos. So I think I'm starting to dial my NFL, uh, you know, crystal ball, starting to dial that, focus that in there a little bit. Good, great, thanks. Hey, hit the like button if you like free college picks. Better yet, if you like free college picks that are winners, which so far this season, more winners than losers, then really hit the like button. Or you can just go, just go crazy. Just go absolutely nuts and subscribe. Because then, then, when I put a video up, you're notified that it's up. And you don't have to keep wondering. Did that guy make a video yet? Did he make a video yet? Because, you know, I make them sporadically. I don't have a schedule. We're, I'm a libertarian. Libertarians don't like schedules. So, good, great, thanks. We'll talk again. Eric Arnold, signing off.